In this example, we want to determine the intervals on which the function given here is increasing or decreasing. And then we're going to go ahead and using the first derivative test, we can find the, lo the local maximum and local minimum values of our function. And then using the second derivative, we can determine the intervals on which the function is concave up or concave down. And then from there, we can find the inflection points. Okay. So in this example, the function we're given is 2 times cosine theta plus cosine squared theta. And this is going to be defined on a restricted domain going from 0 to 2 pi. All right. So first, we need to find the critical numbers. And we're going to do that by um, taking the uh, derivative of this function with respect to theta and then setting that equal to 0. Okay, so we're going to have f prime of theta equal to, okay, the derivative of cosine is minus sine, so we have minus 2 sine theta. Okay, and then we take the derivative of cosine squared, that's going to give us, um, so we have, we bring down the 2, and then we're going to take the derivative of cosine, which is going to give us a, a negative sign, so we're going to end up getting minus 2 times, okay, sine theta times cosine theta. Okay, so, I, so I just went ahead and put the sine theta in front. Okay. All right. So now we're going to set this equal to zero. Okay. So we have minus two times sine theta, minus two times sine theta cosine theta equals to zero. All right. So what we can do here is we can go ahead and uh, factor out a, a negative 2 sine theta. Okay, so we're going to have minus 2 times sine theta. Okay, that's going to leave us with 1 plus cosine theta equals to 0. Okay, okay so we end up getting, uh, we're going to get uh, two equations out of this. So we have sine theta equal to 0, or 1 plus cosine theta equals to 0, okay? All right. So then, again, so we have minus 2 sine theta here, but again, the negative 2 doesn't affect the, uh, it doesn't affect the roots, okay, of this, uh, for this, uh, for, for sine theta, okay? Okay, so, Okay, going back to the unit circle, okay, we solve for sine theta equals zero, we're gonna get, so that's gonna give us the values of theta for zero and pi, okay? So, so sine zero is zero, sine pi is zero, okay? And remember, we're on the restricted domain going from zero to two pi, okay? And from here, okay, we have cosine theta, okay, equals to negative one. So that means that theta is going to be pi, because cosine pi is negative 1. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and plot these on the number line. Okay. All right, let's see. I have, so we're going between 0 and 2 pi. So this is zero, this is two pi. Okay, so. All right, so we're gonna have, uh, so we have pi, okay, in the middle. So I'll go ahead and plot that. All right, so now we need to choose some test points. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna go ahead and choose pi over two. And over here, I'm going to choose 3 pi over 2. Okay. All right, so again, the values that you see here in, in green, those are, those are going to be our test points. So we want to evaluate these back into the first derivative of this function. Okay, so we're going to have f prime of... 
Let's see. I'm going to make some room here. Let's see, so we're going to have F prime of. Let's see if I can move this one down a little bit. All right, so f prime of pi over 2. Okay, we're going to get minus 2 times sine of pi over 2. Minus 2 times sine of pi over 2. Times cosine of pi over 2. Okay. All right, so this is going to give us, uh, we have minus sine pi over 2, so that's going to give us minus, uh, this is sine pi over 2 is 1, so we're going to have minus 2, and then we have uh, minus 2 here, okay, and then we have, well, cosine pi over 2 is 0, so that's going to be easy, so 2 times 0 is going to give us 0, so we end up getting a negative, we end up getting negative 2 here, okay, so that's less than 0, okay, so that means everything between um, 0 and pi for this function is going to be uh, the function will be uh, decreasing okay so if we pick any point again if we pick choose any point between 0 and pi and plug that into the first derivative it's going to be it's going to be less than 0 okay all right so from here we need to evaluate the derivative at 3 pi over 2 We have minus two times uh, minus two times sine of three pi over two minus two times sine of three pi over two times cosine of three pi over two. Okay. And I'll move this down again just to make some room here. Okay. All right. So that means okay. From here we're going to have uh, so we have sine of 3 pi over 2, that's negative 1, so we're going to get positive 2. And then we have uh, minus 2 times negative 1 times 0. Okay, so this is, we can just rewrite this as, okay, so all this, because of the cosine 3 pi over 2, we're going to get 0 here. So this is going to give us uh, positive 2, and that's bigger than 0. So that means for this function going between pi and 2 pi, uh, since it's so any value in there that we substitute back into the first derivative will be positive. So that means it's going to be uh, the function will be increasing between pi and 2 pi. Okay. All right, so we can summarize this. Okay, so it's. So this function is decreasing okay. so it's decreasing from 0 to pi and increasing from pi to 2 pi okay All right, so now let's look at the second uh, part here. So we want to find the local maximum and local minimum values of f. Okay, so we go back up here. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this down. Okay. All right. So, right, we have the function is decreasing from zero to pi, and then and then increasing from pi to two pi. Okay. So that tells us that at pi there's going to be a relative minimum. Okay.
Okay, so at this value, okay? So there's a relative minimum of x equals to pi. Okay. Um, so we can go ahead and find the we can go ahead and find the coordinate for that. Okay. So original function okay, was two times cosine theta plus cosine squared theta. So if we evaluate the function at pi, we're going to get 2 times cosine pi plus cosine squared pi. So cosine pi is negative 1, so we're going to get minus 2. And then cosine squared pi is it's going to give us, uh, that's going to give us positive 1. Okay, so we end up getting the value of negative 1. Okay. Okay, so that means our relative min, right, the relative minimum, okay, the coordinate for that is going to be pi negative 1. Okay. So the relative minimum occurs at x equals to pi, and the actual minimum, right, is the corresponding y value, which is negative 1. Okay. All right, so now we can... Uh, we want to determine the intervals in which the function is concave up or concave down. So we need to take the second derivative of this function. So the first derivative, right, we had, okay, the first derivative, right, we had minus 2 sine theta minus 2 times sine theta cosine theta. Okay, so now we're going to take the second, or so we're going to take the derivative of that to get the second derivative. All right, so we're going to have, okay, so the derivative of sine is cosine, so we're going to get minus 2 times cosine theta. And then for the second part, we need to use the product rule, okay? So we're going to have 2 times, okay, we need to apply this product rule here, okay? All right, so we're going to have sine theta times the derivative with respect to theta of cosine theta plus cosine theta times the derivative of sine theta. and taking the derivative of respect to theta. Okay, so we have minus 2 times cosine theta. Okay, uh, I'll go ahead and distribute the 2 afterward. So after I take the derivatives of these, so sine theta, and then we have the derivative of cosine theta, that's going to give us minus sine theta. And then we have plus cosine theta, the derivative of sine theta will give us cosine theta. Okay, so we have minus 2 times cosine theta minus, um, this is going to change us, this is going to change to a positive, so positive 2 sine squared theta and then minus 2 cosine squared theta. All right. Okay, so now we need to Go ahead and set this equal to zero, okay, to solve for theta, okay. So move this one down, okay. All right, so let's see. All right, so what I'm going to first do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, divide everything by 2. So we end up getting minus cosine theta plus sine squared theta and minus cosine squared theta. So that way we don't have to worry about the coefficients. 
And then from here, we can rewrite this as minus cosine theta. And then I can go ahead and take out a negative from here. So we end up getting cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta equals to zero here. Okay. So this part here, okay, uh, the cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta, that's a that's an identity. Okay, so this is going to give us minus cosine theta. Okay. We can replace this with two cosine squared theta minus one. Okay, so now we have everything in terms of cosine. And so this is going to give us minus cosine theta minus two cosine squared uh, theta plus one equals to zero. Okay. So I'll move this down again. Okay, so from here we can use substitution to solve this. So I'm going to let y, okay. well actually before I do that, I'm going to divide by negative here. Okay, so divide by negative and then I'm going to write this with the, uh, where the powers, I mean where the exponents are decreasing. So this is equivalent to uh, 2 cosine squared theta plus cosine theta minus 1. Okay. So we're going to let y, I'll let y be equal to cosine theta. Okay. Okay, so we have uh, 2y squared plus y minus 1. Okay, so this is this equation here, uh, this trig equation is a typical, it's a typical equation that you would solve in pre-calculus okay, or in trigonometry. Okay, so you do this by doing a substitution and then um, and then we're going to go ahead and factor this. Okay, so we're going to have see uh, so this is going to be factored as y plus 1 times 2y minus 1 equals to 0 from there we have y equals to negative 1 or y equals to 1 half okay. so since y is cosine theta Okay, so from here, so let's go back over here. Um, that would mean that we have cosine theta equals to minus 1 or cosine theta equals to 1 half. Okay. All right, so going back to the inner circle, we know that cosine theta equals negative 1 for theta equals to pi. Okay. And for cosine theta equals to one half, okay. Again, so if we look at the um, if we look at the triangles, okay. So we have uh, cosine theta equals one half. So we know that there is a triangle here okay that's the value of one half and we have it for another one over here okay so this is corresponding to okay so this corresponds to theta equals to pi over three and over here this is going to correspond to five pi over three Uh, actually, I'm sorry, I drew that wrong here. That should be a down, I'm sorry. Let's see, let me erase that. So that's going to be down here. Okay, sorry. So that's for the value of one half. So let me read all this here. Okay. So that is at 5 pi over 3 here. Okay. Okay, so. That's for this angle, pi over 3, 
Then we have another angle right over here for 5 pi over 3. Okay. Sorry. And that's for the value. This is again for 1 half. Okay. All right. So a positive 1 half. All right. So then, okay, we have, okay, so we have our solution pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Okay. All right, so we're going to go ahead and plot these on the number line. Okay. Okay, so we have, let's see, we're going between yeah, 0 and 2 pi. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and plot those uh, values that we just found on our number line. Okay. All right. So we have pi. So pi is here. We have pi over three and five pi over three. Okay. So let me do this in a different color here. So not to confuse with the test points. All right. Okay, so let's choose for our test points. I'm going to choose pi over four from here and choose 3 pi over 4 and here we can choose 3 pi over 2 and from here we can choose 7 pi over 4 okay all right so just picking values okay going along the unit circle between 0 and 2 pi all right so Okay, so now we need to go ahead and evaluate those test points. Okay. So move this down again. All right, so we're going to plug these back into the second derivative okay which was up here all right so let me write that down here our second derivative was f prime of theta equals to uh, minus two cosine theta plus two sine squared theta minus 2 cosine squared theta. Okay, so make sure I got that correct. Yep. Okay. All right, so, okay, I'll move this down again. All right, so first we have f prime of pi over four. So we have minus two cosine of pi over four plus two sine squared of pi over four minus two cosine squared of pi over four. Okay, so when we evaluate that, it turns out it's going to give us, um, it's going to give us a negative value here. Okay, so we can go ahead and calculate it. So cosine pi, so cosine pi over four is going to give us um, that's going to give us uh, root two over two, and then we have sine squared. So sine squared pi over four that's going to give us 
one uh one oops so when I square that so sine pi over four is root two over two so when we square that we're gonna get uh, one half so it's basically root two over two squared so that gives us two over four which reduces to one half and then we have uh, cosine squared pi over four would be will also have a value of one half. Okay, so this is going to give us minus root two plus one minus one. So we get negative root two. So that tells us it's decreasing. Right, I'm sorry, uh, not decreasing. That tells us it's concave down on this interval. Since I'm okay, we're on this part of the problem. Okay, so. Right. It's a very long problem. Okay. Okay. So, so now let's evaluate the second derivative at three pi over four. Okay, and then minus two cosine square root of 3 pi over 4. Okay, so we're going to have, so 3 pi over 4, okay, all right, that's right, going to give us, um, all right, so that's for cosine, that's going to be uh, negative, so negative uh, square root of 2 over 2, and for that, for sine squared, that's going to give us right, one half, and then we have minus two times one half again because they're just so we're basically just squaring those. So this is going to give us uh, root two plus one minus one, so we end up getting root two. So that's bigger than zero. Okay, so that means it's going to be concave on that particular interval. Okay, so now we're going to evaluate the second root at three. I'm oh, sorry, at uh, 3 pi over 2. Let's see. Yep. Okay, so we have minus 2 times cosine of 3 pi over 2 plus 2 times sine squared of 3 pi over 2 minus 2 cosine squared of 3 pi over 2. Okay. okay, so cosine 3 pi over 2 is going to be 0, so this is going to give us minus 2 times 0 plus sine squared, pi, three pi, sine squared of 3 pi over 2, since sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, uh, this is going to give us positive 1 here, and then minus 2 uh, cosine squared of 3 pi over 2 is 0, so we get minus 2 times 0. So we end up getting 2 here, which is right, obviously greater than 0. Okay. okay, so one more test point. Okay, we have to evaluate at 7 pi over 4. So we have minus 2 cosine of 7 pi over 4 plus 2 sine squared of 7 pi over 4 minus 2 cosine squared of 7 pi over 4. Okay, so cosine 7 of pi over 4 is going to be okay, uh, 1 half. And then sine, sine of 7 pi over 4, that's going to be negative 1, but we're squaring it, so this is going to give us positive 1. Cosine squared of 7 pi over 4, um, that's going to give us, when we square that, that's going to give us um, uh, actually, okay, so 7, so actually, back up here, so Cosine of 7 pi over 4, sorry, it's going to be root, sorry. So this is root 3 over 2. Okay. Yeah. 
I was thinking of pi over 3 for some reason. So that's root 3 over 2. So cosine squared of 7 pi over 4, uh, when we square that, that's, uh, I'm sorry, that's going to be root 2. So, so this is root 2 over 2, okay? All right, and then for 7 pi, for cosine squared of 7 pi over 4, that's going to be, uh, so we're going to have root 2 over 2 squared. So that's going to give us a value of 2 fourths, which reduces to 1 half. So again, cosine of 7 pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. So we have minus 2 times root 2 over 2 plus sine of 7 pi over 4. Okay, that is, okay, so I need to correct that too. So that's going to give us a value of 1, 1 half. Okay, because sine of 7 pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, but when we square that, we're going to get 2 over 4, which reduces to 1 half. And cosine of 7 pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, when we square that, we get 1 fourth, I'm sorry, we get 2 fourths, which reduces to 1 fourth. So we get minus root 2 plus 1 minus 1, so that gives us a value of minus root 2, okay, which is less than 0, okay. All right, so we made it, okay, so, all right, so then, okay, so we can go back up here. So we had on this interval was decreasing. We had a negative value on this interval. We had a positive value. So it's so it's um, sorry not this is con this is for concavity. So this is concave down. This is going to be concave up. Here this was positive. So let me make sure we had a positive value. So that's concave up. And then this is concave down. Okay. Since we have a negative value there. Okay, so let's summarize this, and then we'll talk about the inflection points. Okay, so for this function, right, we had, right, it's concave up from pi over 3 to pi, and from pi to 5 pi over 3. Okay, and concave down from 0 to pi over 3. Okay. And from 5 pi over 3 to 2 pi. All right. Okay, so that's the result for concavity. So now from there, we can easily tell the, uh, we can easily get the inflection points. So I'm going to, I'm going to copy this here. Because we need this result. Okay. Okay, uh, let's see, did I, oh, copied the wrong one. That was the one for the increasing and decreasing, so I need this one. Okay, so, let me back up here. Yeah, this is the one we need. So it'll be easier than for me to uh, reach all that. Okay, there we go. So based on this, okay, based on this result, we can see that we have inflection points at okay pi over three and five pi over three. Again. Uh, the inflection points is where the concavity is changing. Okay. Okay, so we have inflection points. At theta equals to since our function is in terms of theta, okay. So this is going to be theta equals to 
So the inflection points at theta equals to pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Okay, so, right, so it's going from, right, it's changing from concave down to concave up at 5 pi, uh, I'm sorry, at pi over 3, and it's going from concave up to concave down at 5 pi over 3. Okay. So this value, okay, and this value here. All right. So now we can go ahead and find the coordinates for those. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and evaluate our function. Okay, so our original function was f of theta equals to 2 cosine theta plus cosine squared theta. Okay. So f of pi over 3, okay, we have 2 cosine of pi over 3 plus cosine squared of pi over 3. So this is going to give us cosine pi over 3, that's going to give us 1 half, so we have 2 times 1 half, and then we have, uh, this is going to be 1 half squared. Okay, so this is going to give us, uh, we have 1 plus 1 fourth, so that's going to give us 5 fourths. Okay. And then we have f of 5 pi over 3. So again, we're evaluating the, we're just evaluating our critical value, critical, I'm sorry, evaluating our flexion points at the, fun, at the function. So we have 2 times cosine of 5 pi over 3 plus cosine squared of 5 pi over 3. Okay, so remember, going back up here, so we have, right, remember that for pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3, these two triangles share the same adjacent side. That gives us a value of 1 half. So this is going to be 2 times 1 half plus, this will be cosine squared of pi over 3, so that's going to give us 1 fourth. Okay, so we get, okay, 1 plus one fourth, that's going to give us five fourths. Okay, so the coordinates for our inflection points, okay, are going to be, okay, we have for pi over, for both of these actually, we have a value of five fourths. So we have pi over three. We have uh, pi over 3, 5 fourths. And for the other one, which is 5 pi over 3, okay, we also get 5 fourths. Okay, so those are the coordinates for the inflection points. Okay. Ooh, okay, so it's pretty pretty long but the, but the idea here is to I mean it's the same thing that we've seen before okay you have your given your function if you want to determine the intervals of which the where the function is increasing or decreasing you take the derivative in this case we take the derivative with respect to theta set that equal to zero that so that gives us our critical numbers we plot those on the number line okay and then from there you can if the right we pick the test point and each in each interval, okay, if it's negative, it will be decreasing in that respective interval. If it's positive, it's going to be increasing in that in that specific in that respective interval. Okay. And then from there, using the first derivative test, okay, we can see that okay, in this case we have a uh, turning point at pi, and since the function is decreasing and then increasing, okay. Um, Right, so it's decreasing, then increasing. So that means at that value of pi, it's there's a relative minimum there. Okay, and then from here we use the second derivative to look at the concavity. Okay, so we take the second derivative, set it equal to zero, and 
and then we pick a point right we will plot those points on your on your line okay on the real line between 0 and 2 pi and then pick test points in each interval and if it's and then put those test points back into the second derivative okay if it's negative it's going to be uh, concave down on that on that respective interval if it's positive it's going to be concave uh, concave up on that respective interval okay and then for the inflection points we look for where the concavity changes so in this case the concavity was changing at pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3 but not changing at pi okay so those are inflection points and then to get the to get the corresponding y values we evaluate those back into the original function and that gave us our coordinates for the inflection points okay